it's a lot <laughs> and it happened in a, in a relatively very short period of time it's been less than a month um, and so or I think it's been exactly a month actually since the very first video I posted about Gaza What is the reason I converted? It really was the connection to God that I feel every time I every time I read the Quran. Um, It's deeper, each each holy book that I've, I've read, and I don't mean to be disrespectful to anyone, this is just my own personal experience with reading holy books. As wonderful as I found them, as, as much as I dove into them, there was never really a connection to God when I've, when I've read them. It, um, was sort of just more of an understanding of the humans that follow that religion, which is what I was seeking with Islam as well. I just wanted to understand the humans who were Muslim on a deeper level. Um, a lot of what the Quran teaches are, is our core beliefs that I already had within myself so to just have that reflected back on on to me and knowing that it came directly from God that was a life-changing experience hi Dallas Texas Malaysia hello free Palestine always If you're talking about the stages, if you're talking about the stages of like the fetus and, and everything like that, yeah, I, I learned about that. That was actually one of the things that I, that really impressed me because in science, How did I learn to wrap my hijab? I trial and error. <laughs> I just started not playing with it. Like I took it seriously, but I, I was just testing different ways to, to wrap it. Edit. <laughs> it wasn't, it, it, it didn't, have this this the letter to America didn't have this shocking reaction for me that it did for everyone else because keep in mind I've been an activist since I was 17 years old so a lot of a lot of the things that were in the letter I already knew because when, when you're an activist that's on the ground meaning like when you're marching when you're meeting House of Representatives senators when you're visiting their office staff and their offices when you're when you are talking with other older activists that have been in the game for years and years and years. You just pick pick these things up. You learn about them. And not to mention, um, I recently posted a, a video about it, but back when 9-11 when happened, there was this documentary that was released online. Um, the website was called loosechange.com. And the Loose Change documentary was very um, damning for America as far as America's role or the United States' role in 9-11. And, so, and, and also, if you've ever read I Am Malala, um, 
that book also goes into uh, Mal- uh, Malala goes into just the different terrorist groups around the world that the United States had a hand in creating. And so it, it's not a secret. None of that is actually like a secret. It's It's been documented and it's it, it, the information is out there. I think the reason why it's so groundbreaking for Americans is because we're we we are quite literally fed propaganda from the very beginning. Like when when we go into when we start school, like from kindergarten, we start to get fed all we we learned was that George Washington chopped down a cherry tree when he was younger. Um, He was the first president of the United States and he had wooden teeth. It wasn't until I was a full grown adult that I found out that he did not have wooden teeth. He had teeth that were made from the teeth of enslaved Africans, like they were enslaved people. They knocked out the enslaved people's teeth to make him dentures. And so it's that sort of thing. Like history is so twisted when we're in school in America um, that it, it you, you quite literally have to go through years and years and years of unlearning because they indoctrinate us with false information, just complete lies. And so that's what's I think that's why um, the letter is like has that sort of effect on Americans who have been indoctrinated and now they're waking up for the very first time. I think that's that's why the the letter has gone so viral, but there's yeah, for me when I read it I was like yeah, you know like this is this is pretty much the information I've I've known for years, you know. Um, someone said, I'm not yet diagnosed with autism, but I also like to keep my hijab on all the time. <laughs> it's just comforting. Um, someone said, Megan, as a convert, do you still support LGBTQ? Thank you. Um, a lot of y'all are not going to like my answer. Absolutely. When I reverted, God did not place hate in my heart for anyone. Um, and that's, 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 that's simply that. That's, that's the answer to that. Um. I'm still at, you know, as I'm reading the Quran and is drastically, drastically, not, not like misunderstood, but the focus is in the wrong place where that comes up, in my opinion. Um, like it's the story of Lot is when it, it comes up. It's the story of Lot, how the men come come in and tell Lot, you can't you should know by now you can't protect anyone from us. And Lot then says, Your your men who go after men, you're you're surely transgressors. But people completely skip over the fact that these men were in Lot's house to S.A. the angels that were there. They completely gloss over the fact that these men were predators. So, and they go straight to the fact that, oh, you hear what Lot said? So, so I still don't, um, just from my own study,
Um, what chapter am I at in the Quran? I'll have to look to see where my bookmark is, but I'm almost done. I, I keep getting interrupted, like, with <laughs> just all the various life. Um, I try to really prioritize it. And I was supposed to be done last week. Like I was really supposed to sit down and be done. But thankfully I have like a flight because for those who don't know, um, being at a uh, women's conference that she's going to be at in California, in Ir Irvine, California. Um, and that's this Saturday. So thankfully, I'll have the time on the plane where I can't be on my phone because I'll be in airplane mode. <laughs> so I I will have to, like, you know, I will have that time to dedicate to to reading the Quran. And it's not as if it's a rush. I, I still want to read for understanding, not necessarily to finish it in a fast amount of time. I want to make sure that I'm reading for understanding. Do I know Dr. Zakir Naik? Yes. And a lot of you are huge fans of him. <laughs> People ask me if I know him all the time. I, I, um, he was one of the first uh, scholars that I looked up, actually. What's my ethnicity? I'm biracial, actually. My, um, my dad was black, African-American, and my mom is white. Can it be live streamed? I'm not, I'm not sure. That's a good question. Um, I'll look into it. I'm not sure if it's just in person or I didn't see anything for virtual. So I'll, I'll look into it though. It was a very last minute type thing. Why do people ask about ethnicity? I'm genuinely confused. Some people are just curious. I don't really hold it against them. What are my parents' reaction? My mother was very supportive and proud. My father passed away when I was 18. So it's just my mom. Um, do I plan on changing my name? No, I will, I will be staying as Megan. How old am I? I am 34 years old. Well, thank you. What is the meaning of my name? Um, it's Welsh, I believe. Uh, and it means pearl and great. It's really precious. How is Islamophobia around me lately? Are, are you safe? Thank you for asking. I have not received any issues so far and I have been out pretty much every day. Um, I haven't gotten any dirty looks, but keep in mind, I think that a lot of people who see um, hijabis are typically the, the Islamophobic folks are typically cowards and go for like the smaller women. Um, I'm, I'm almost six foot tall. <laughs> so that helps, I think, uh, um, in, in me not receiving any kind of issues. So, and for those who don't use the American like measuring system, I, I'm, I think 180 centimeters. So, so 
someone said, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys want to see? I'm wearing like more of the workout pants. So forgive my, keep in mind I'm lounging at home. So forget the lack of modesty, but so my ceilings are nine feet. My ceilings are nine feet tall. So, you know, if I'm on my tippy toes, I can touch my ceiling. <laughs> Yeah, I'm tall. <laughs> Got it from my mom's side of the family. My mom is 5'9", um, but my uncles, so my grandfather was 6'4", one of my uncles is 6'5", and my other uncle is 6'9". <laughs> so, definitely get my height from my mom's side. My brothers are tall too, but. Ah, oh, mommy, Amani says I'm six foot two. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, then you're a little taller than me. I'm like five eleven and a half ish, but. What's the angel's beef with Lot's wife? Ooh, I found that out. I found that out. So I was on live with um, Ebostani and I asked him that question. I said, what are the angel's beef with Lot's wife? Or what did, what did, what did Lot's wife do so horribly <laughs> that the angels have so much beef with her? Apparently, the sin of Lot's wife was that she was the whistleblower. So whenever Lot, keep in mind, the people of the, of the town or whatever were predators, like they would SA people. And Lot's wife would tell them whenever Lot had visitors, like she would go out and say, hey, there's some good looking visitors. And she was like an accomplice of SA. So the beef is, the beef is justified. <laughs> she is in the fire. <laughs> she is in the fire for sure. I'm sharing. <laughs> I'm sharing stories of the Quran like it's tea because it is. It absolutely is. It's just so fascinating. It's so fascinating. Look up I'm I'm at Didat on YouTube. I do plan on after I'm after I finish this book, I do plan on looking him up because I'm I'm curious as to what his personality is like. <laughs> Cause in this book his personality is kind of like very uh abrupt, <laughs> you know. <laughs> what advice do I have for I want to ask an innocent question. Did your husband revert and do you have kids? I do not have kids and my husband did not revert. We are separated actually. <laughs> so that's that. Have I tried praying yet? Yes. <laughs> I have attempted praying. Um, well, I mean, I pray every day, like the, the way I usually pray or the, the way I'm used to praying, I pray every day. But as far as like the, um, five prayers I have attempted them and um it'll it'll definitely get easier once I have them memorized um and not just them memorized but the meaning of them memorized because right now I'm doing them but I'm feeling no co connection to God simply because I don't know what it means um or like it's it's not my natural language um and I'm and I'm constantly thinking about pronouncing it correctly so I'm constantly looking on the screen on, on YouTube and, and reading like the romanization of it and trying to pronounce it correctly and then do the motions and everything. So it's it's right now, since it's the very beginning, um, it's not spiritual yet. It's it's not um, it doesn't have that spiritual connection yet because it's still, you know, the learning process.
you can't pray in English. The five prayers, I believe, must be done in Arabic, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, you could pray, you could like do your own prayer throughout the day, of course. And I've, I, of course, do that in in, in English and in, in my own, with my own heart, you know. But um, right now, as I'm learning the other five prayers in Arabic, um, there's just that disconnect because I, I don't know the language yet. Divorced because I converted? No. <laughs> Good question. No, it wasn't as if I reverted to Islam and he was like, I want a divorce. <laughs> no, this, this has been like a long process, a long time coming. Um, I do have an a, that's the app that I use is a fan. But the thing is, I always like miss it. You like you have to be right on time with AFAN in order to be able to I, I might be like a couple minutes late or I might not like, you know, get to to my mat in time. So. But yeah. Am I happy that I'm a Muslim? Yes, of course. It's an honor. It's still difficult to wake up. It always will be. <laughs> For Fajr, it always will be difficult to wake up. I, I have to make up Fajr like nearly every day so far because it like my body can't like it, it just is not it, it's not working. I was successful in waking up for Fajr once. <laughs> One time I was successful for waking up uh, to uh, for Fajr. So far. I know I'm doing it to myself because I always go to bed late. I need to go to bed early. I need to go to bed at like 9 p.m. in order to get be fully rested for Fajr. But I'm a night owl. What can I say? Have I prayed in congregation before? The feeling is peaceful. Not yet. That is soon to come, though. I will be visiting the Mecca Center here in Chicago when I get back from visiting family. And so I'll, I'll be able to pray with the congregation soon. What time is Fajr here? It's like... I've seen it as early as like 4.50 a.m. and or like up to 5.19 a.m. It's been, it's been rough. It's been rough. Just wake up for 10 minutes and go back to sleep. That's the thing. I can't go back to sleep after I wake up. So I drag throughout the entire day. And I have to drink coffee and my, my body doesn't handle caffeine very well. So my hands are like this all day after I drink coffee. You have a baya? Like the, the, like the prayer um, rope? I do. I was gifted one. By one of, it was so sweet. I was gifted. So um, when I went to Fort Con bookstore, uh, someone from the book club who lives here in, in Illinois knew the owners and said, I'll go with you. And so um, he and his little sister accompanied me and they were so sweet. They gave me like, they got me like a new prayer mat and um, they got me, ooh, you know what they got me? I haven't worn it yet. I've been, I've been, I've been, oh, I'm so excited. And it smells so good. I don't know what detergent they used, but like everything that they gave me smelled so good. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but. But anyway. I love it. 
but uh, yes so um they got me the uh the kefia and then they just got me a whole bunch of stuff they got me uh like favorite arab like hazelnut cookies and stuff it, it it's just been oh there was but what i was saying is there i they uh stopped by their house to like pick up something before we ate at babasaj which was like this this palestinian um shawarma play oh my gosh oh my gosh i thought that i had had shawarma before and i did not <laughs> I could confidently say before that moment, I did not have real shawarma, but, uh, we, we stopped at their house and their mom came out and gave me all kinds of hugs and, and like gave me the, the prayer rope. I, I, I started crying, but it was, it was just so precious. It was so precious. They call it little Palestine. It's called Babasage. the best it's it's top five best food i've ever had ever in my life and that's saying something i've had a lot of good food in my life <laughs> what part of illinois do i live in i live in chicago don't ask which part Nice try. <laughs> Not giving that info away, but. <laughs> Did I find a husband yet? Like five years ago and we're on our way out. <laughs> My next husband will probably be, probably be Arab, to be honest. The way things are looking. <laughs> this is probably what's going to happen. <laughs> Netherlands. That's one of the first Netherlands I got. Hello. Australia. Oh, I love it. Dubai. So you're rich. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> hmm. Do I have a cat? Oh, you hear? You hear Mufasa in the background announcing that he just pooped? He announces it to the whole house. Those are my kids. Those are the kids I have. Or I have two cats, Mufasa and Boots. Boots. Yeah. Come here. Meet the peoples. Meet the peoples, Boots Boots. This is Boots. Oh, this is a... So Mufasa is my ginger cat. He's the ginger of the family, the orange tabby. Someone said stay away from Arab men. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I just have two cats. I'm not a cat lady yet. I know when I'm when I'm older. Anytime I see a black cat, I'm It's 
Am I excited for Ramadan? I am. I am. So um, at first I was, <laughs> at first um, I was excited because I fast every day or try to it in any way. These past couple of weeks have not been good. <laughs> so I've just been eating whenever I want um, but usually I, I fast every day and only eat between the hours of like 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. And I only have like one meal a day with all the nutrients and everything. It's not like I'm starving myself or anything. But so I thought I would be ready for, for Ramadan. Like, oh, yeah, that's going to be easy. Then when I said it in the book club, like I'm ready for Ramadan, like I'm excited. Everybody about Aisha, um, the Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him's. A favorite wife and uh at the end of the discussion we we talked about it and, and everything like that uh everybody was asking their questions and one one question was are you excited for uh, for Ramadan I told them the exact same thing and they're like oh but it's so magical like it's the best time and when it's over you don't want it to be over and you you're ready for like a whole other month of uh, of Ramadan and um you you i it's sad that that you uh or they were they were saying like it's too bad that you don't have the memories of summer break at ramadan apparently that was a magical time of of like summer break at ramadan and they were uh saying like we're we're out to like 2 a.m and and we just have such a such a good time and i was like when do y'all sleep and they're like oh we don't sleep during Ramadan. I'm like, I don't know when I get sleep. It's just that. And so I was like, like they seemed very passionate and excited and like could not wait for it. But I was telling them, I was like, I am 34 years old. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to get my sleep. <laughs> Y'all could stay out till 2 a.m. You could, you could do that all you want. If I'm without water all day, you best believe. <laughs> you best believe when that, when that fast breaks, I am grubbing. I, I am stuffing my face and I am guzzling down a gallon of water <laughs> and going to sleep. <laughs> Am I going to read the Prophet Muhammad? Peace be upon him. What was that? I missed it. I'm sorry. I prayed God to have children in Ramadan. 18 years ago, God listened to my prayer. Oh, alhamdulillah. Oh, thank you, Asma Allah Hosni. Thank you. Mashallah. is not the issue what is going to be difficult is the thirst i i am serious about my water (laughs) i'm serious about my water Someone said, uh, yes, the thirst, the hunger is much more challenging because or the thirst is much more challenging. Yeah, because after you go without food for like more than a 24 hour period, you're you stop being hungry. It's true. Like one after one to two days, if you have gone without food, your body turns off hunger completely. And you're just not hungry anymore. Whereas thirst, you can't. You absolutely can't go even a full 24 hours without drinking something. Your body will lose 
I I tried going 24 hours without even drinking water and just doing a full fast. I almost lost my mind. I, I had to break it for water. I had to break it. When we break our fast, we usually feel so full after three bites in a glass of water. Yeah, I believe that. Love you from Jerusalem, Palestine. How, how long is that in the spring? Sunrise is around like 6 a.m. Sunsets around like 7-ish. It's like 13 hours. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Train myself with three three gulps of water each day. Y'all, I just know myself. <laughs> I know myself. I could not handle that. I could not handle just three gulps of water. Watermelon will help me. Oh, y'all, y'all are sweet. Watermelon will help me. Um, I have to stay away from water. There are certain certain fruits that I have to stay away from. Apparently, the sugar content in water or watermelon is is higher. I'm diabetic, so I can't have like the high sugar stuff. Do I? Always listen to my body and <laughs> completely avoid the high sugar stuff. Not always. I am sometimes bad in that department, but not not very much. I really try to take care of my health, especially considering like diabetes runs in my family and previous family members did not. Um, the illness that they got as a result was actually very difficult, so. Um, try to somebody said do I want advice during Ramadan try to move too much believe don't try to move too much is that what you mean I'd imagine like if you do all kinds of stuff around the house and everything you're going to get thirsty because you're exp expelling like sweat and everything. Listen. I will lay in bed. <laughs> like I will, I'll do whatever I have to do to get through. I already told um I already told my boss like uh cuz when I was wearing the hijab I was uh she was just like, "Oh, good for you" and everything. And I was like, "I just want to let you know Don't make me mad during Ramadan season. <laughs> I just want to tell you that right now. Yeah, I have a nice boss. She's really cool. I am not going to say what I do for a living or where I work because y'all see what kind of work I do on this here app. I am an activist. <laughs> okay. I am an activist and I speak out about issues that doesn't always coincide with job security. <laughs> TikTok, TikTok doesn't pay enough to, to be able to sustain living, <laughs> despite what, what some people may think. 
people think that once you reach a, a certain level of followers, you just automatically start making a lot. Of, and it's not the case. TikTok pays so poorly, <laughs> so poorly. You still need a full time job. The only people actually making money from TikTok like full time have millions and millions and millions and millions of followers. Like those are the uh, who's who's like a huge TikToker on here that has like several million followers. Like each of your videos have to reach in the several millions in order to make any money off of TikTok. Like enough to pay all your bills and everything and, and not have another job. That Charlie girl. Yeah. What's her name? The one that, that, that does the tiny dances and people go for some reason, go crazy for it. And it's not, it's not, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to be a hater. I'm just saying, like, I, I never got it because they're just they're just like these tiny. They just like are muted dances. D'Amelio. That's right. OK. Charlie D'Amelio. I, I don't see it's it's those TikTokers that have been around for like the longest time. People go crazy over them. I don't I, I don't get it. Maybe it's my age group. Maybe it's me being 34 years old. Where it just. I don't understand it, but then again, they probably think the same thing about me. <laughs> like, girl, all you do is sit on your couch and talk. What do you mean? Sister, advice for God's sake, delete all the clips without a hijab. No, thank you. But thank you for for your concern. But that woman was still very much me. And I don't want to delete who I was. The beauty that is showing prior was prior to my shahada. So... Uh, Ramadan is the month we use our time to read the Quran and Hadith. I do know that, like reading the Quran in its entirety. That's why I'm trying to, I'm trying to really get it complete in English so that I know the contents of it, so that I I actually understand it and have the full understanding, and I'm and I'm able to process each surah. Um, because starting in, I want to start in January with really, really being able to read it in Arabic. I know that's, that might be impossible, like an impossible goal, <laughs> but um, inshallah, I, I, I am confident I can get there. Please don't let anyone tell you different. Here's the thing with, with any religion, keep in mind, human beings follow religion um, and human beings are flawed human beings will twist whatever they read to make you feel uncomfortable or to make you feel wrong, to make themselves feel better. The Quran is for everyone, everyone. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter who you love. It doesn't matter. The, the Quran is for everyone. You are free to read it for free. Actually, like the, like the, Furkan Foundation. Um, I think the 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 link in my bio is if you like want to sponsor a box, like if you want if you want to like pay for a box for for the the Quran to go out for free to a, a bunch of people. But they that foundation actually does give out the Quran for free, the clear Quran, the the translation that I'm that I read. Um, so if you're non-Muslim and you are just curious and want to read it, you can go, you can absolutely read it for free. They'll send it to you for free. And there's apps. Yes. When I first started out, I, I will be honest. The physical book is a lot better for me personally, just because in the English translation, because what I'm about to say, if I didn't specify English translation, not in. but uh, 
I like to highlight and tab and and um, just have my own system for studying. So the physical book is works better for me that way. But the app that I used was like the Quran.com app prior to getting the physical copy. That's what I used. And that still has like highlighting capabilities and, and things like that. So I do recommend that. What's my new daily routine? Th that's why I don't have a set sleep schedule because it's all over the place. It's I, I haven't been able to establish a routine yet because when I wake up, um, I try to catch up on prayer, but I try to sit down with my Quran for at least a few minutes before starting work, but I'll get email after email after email, DM after DM after DM. I'll get texts like my whole phone blows up with texts. So it's very difficult to establish a routine because I'm either doing this for this person, this for this person, or I have to follow up with this person. It's it's just been very in this beginning stage of everything. It's been it's been pretty overwhelming. So I haven't been able, unfortunately, to set up a routine yet. Am I happy? I am happy. I'm very blessed. You don't have to wear the hijab at all times. I know I don't, but I, <laughs> I do simply because I like it. <laughs> it's comfy. Like, it's comfy, cozy. It's like wearing, you know, it's it's like wearing a hoodie. You know, like, like a, a nice soft hoodie, like over your, sometimes when you just want to feel like comfort. Have you ever like watched a movie and you had the whole blanket over your like you like you put the whole blanket over your head and you just curl? That's what a hijab feels like twenty four seven. So even if I don't have to wear it twenty four seven, I do because it's just <laughs> comfy, cozy. Um. Thank you. What am I studying? So I made a video of all the books that I am working on, but did y'all want to see them? If you didn't see that video, I can show y'all now all the books that I am um, reading or, or on the list to read. Yes. Okay. So the one that I'm reading now that I'll finish tonight, because it's very, very short, it's only 60 pages. So I'll finish this like right after this live. It'll only take me like, half hour to finish it but it's uh, Muhammad peace be upon him the greatest by Ahmed Didat um, and these books came highly recommended by the Fort Khan Academy themselves like so when I went there I was planning on picking up um, the Hadiths a study journal um and then just like a just like a few other I needed a prayer mat I needed a prayer mat and they sell like the that too and they start with which I thought, thought was so sweet but um so he got me the Muhammad peace be upon him the greatest then he got uh he picked out the collection of An Nawawi, 40 Hadith, the Prophet's Traditions. And I like it because oh, it's so tiny. I'm obsessed with this. It's so tiny. I haven't read it yet, but I'm just like, I can't wait because it's just, it's so tiny. I love tiny things. Um, and this is Quran Teachings Made Simple for Women, a Compact and Informative Guide. That's what it looks like. And this one goes over, ooh, it's all in, it's in color and pretty flowers and stuff. <gasps> like, this is like the inside, it's like, it has all different kind of, I didn't know that, ooh. I love colors. Anyway, um, this one talks about, ooh, anything from motherhood, divorce, First, the concept of intercession, being magnanimous, Satan's footsteps. <laughs> um, 
a good woman, inheritance, repentance, kindness to parents, like. And this one has. Like it doesn't just go over like what you need to do to fast. It goes over um, the definition. To fast, travelers, the sick, the elderly, Ania, uh, and the intention in fasting, and when to start and stop fasting. So it's literally everything that has to do with fasting, which is very helpful. Then they got me a brief illustrated guide to the understanding of Islam. And this looks major. <laughs> this looks very scientific, extremely. Oh, it says, yeah, yeah. This one is the one that has like science editors and everything. But that's this one. And the inside reads like a text, like like a textbook. Like look at look at the inside of this. Look how them they are already muslim but it just helps them stay on track and and it reminds um them to stay on track and it's like kind of like a work it has like worksheets in it and everything but this is called the talimul haq the guidance of personal life according to um islam that's what it looks like i haven't dug in into this yet but it came recommended so we'll see. It goes over the Masjid, Nafal Salah, Mazur, Salah of a sick person, death, Gusal, or Gusal, Kafan, Masa'il, Jana Azab, Salah, burial, inheritance, Nikah, Nikah. nikah. The H's is what gets me. Nik, nik, nikah. Walim. Talak. Or divorce. Idat. Virtues of earning halal. Harms of earning haram. Good business conduct. Uh, riba. In, or interest in working for someone or labor. So it goes over pretty much everything. And then this last one is Prophet Muhammad's, peace, peace be upon him, um, biography, abridgment of Prophet Muhammad's, peace be upon him, biography by Imam um, Ibn Kathir. Kathir, this one. And so those are the books. And then I have the, the kids version broken up of like the clear Quran, the kids textbooks that, that help make it a bit easier. And then they also gave me a, I'm not going to touch it with my hands because it has the, the Arabic in it. It's a study Quran journal. Um, and I haven't cleaned my hands, so I'm not going to touch it. But I am studying to, uh, I am studying Spanish or I, I want to be able to speak Spanish, if not fluently, conversationally within the next couple of years. So that will be nice practice to read the Quran in Spanish. And then these are the, the kid books that I was telling about, like the kid version of the books that 
they said would be really helpful in getting me to understand. So, yeah. And that's pretty much then all the rest of my books. These are this is my haram bookshelf underneath. <laughs> This is the pre the the pre shahada life, <laughs> the romance novel life. <laughs> oh, I probably should not have my grandmother's Bible on that shelf. Let me let me go ahead and move that. I think I got I was putting it away like out of Mufasa's reach because Mufasa likes the little the charm on it. Oh Lord, let me put this on. The, well, now I don't know. Is it haram to put the Holy Bible on the same shelf as the Quran? Doesn't the Quran have to be the highest? It's not haram. It's fine. Okay, good. Because it's my Grammy's Bible. Like this, this was her most prized possession. She gave it. She gave it to me. Actually, that's when I knew she was going to pass. Unfortunately, we shared a room in her last days. We shared a room in her last days. Um, And she had to go back to the hospital because she had renal failure. So her kidneys were failing. And she had to go back to the hospital for like dialysis and everything. But she put on, she left her Bible on my bed. That woman did not go anywhere without her Bible. Anywhere. So when she left her Bible on my bed, I knew that that was like her goodbye. Like that was that was her her way of saying goodbye. And so I've taken it with me ever since. And when I open it, thank goodness it has like the the little pouch, the the zipper cover to it, because every time I open it, it still smells like her. Even years and years later, I I lost her when I was 16. It was St. Patrick's Day when I was 16. And um I had actually had a little spurt of faith. It wasn't necessarily the Bible that moved me. It was just seeing her notes in it. And, um, um, you know, just being able to, to, to smell her and just feel her there, feel, feel her presence there. But then a few months later, a few months after that, my dad was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. That was his mom, too. But my dad was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, stage four. And for that whole other year, he was, he like, for... For a year... He fought it and he actually passed away like two days after what would have been my graduation. Of course, I didn't go to my. Yeah, so these are the this is the stack of books that I'm going to be studying for the next. I want to get these done because they're not bad, like they're all very they're all pretty much short. So I would like to finish them by the end of next week. Um, I think I could do it. I 